A few months ago, we decided that enough was enough for this sad, dingy walkway outside of our short-term rental in San Diego. And a mural seemed like the perfect solution. Our original plan is we were gonna hire a muralist to do it, but the more we thought about it, we decided it was something that we'd like to try ourselves. So we drafted our design plan, we got all of our materials, and we started painting, only to realize that we had made a very critical mistake. What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie, and if you watched our video a couple weeks ago with Phoebe of Panda Design Co., then you know that we've been trying to learn all about murals. Phoebe gave us some great tips on a DIY mural, so if you ever plan to do one at your own property, you should definitely check that video out. Yeah, and watch this one. You can learn about some of the mistakes we made, as well as a few things we think we did right. So first off, why did we add a mural? This walkway is the direct path to the entry doors for both of the units at our duplex property. The garage is located at the back of the property, then you walk down this side walkway to get to the doors. So really, it's one of the first impressions that a guest sees when they get to the house. Yeah, so we could have just painted this wall a plain color, but the more we thought about it, we thought it would be a nice marketing opportunity, a cool feature where someone might want to take a picture, post it on social media, and share with their friends. And maybe give us a tag. Yeah, maybe. So we started researching muralists in San Diego and we sent a few emails out, but ultimately we decided to do the project ourselves. There are a couple reasons why we decided to DIY this project. And the first is that we just wanted to. We like doing DIY projects together and this duplex, you know, was our first property and really was like a big DIY project for ourselves. So adding this feature was something they were interested in trying ourselves. That's definitely a flaw of ours, especially with this particular property. We have a really hard time letting go of the reins there. The second reason was that the timing worked out perfectly. We would blocked off some time at the property to get out of the desert heat. Kylie's parents had already planned to come down and spend some time with our kids. There was time for us to knock out this mural. And the third reason was price. And I want to clarify that it's not that we don't think that hiring a professional muralist is worth the money. We we don't want to devalue their services or say that they're not worth the money that they're charging. We just really wanted to try this project ourselves and the fact that it would only cost us the cost of the paint and a day of our vacation, but we thought it would be fun. So basically just the cost of our paint versus the quotes that were coming in for this job, which ranged from about $5,000 to $10,000. We figured that the worst case scenario was that we would just end up painting over the whole thing and then hiring a pro, but we decided to do it. The next step was creating a design. I took the lead on this part, and if you've seen some of our other videos, then you probably already know that I'm a big fan of Canva. And Canva is basically a graphic design tool for people like me, and maybe you who aren't necessarily graphic designers. I wanted this mural design to be simple and easy for beginners. I wanted to have little to no freehand drawing involved, so be able to tape out all of the lines, just because we wanted to make this as simple for us as possible being our first time. I also wanted to bring in some color, but not like a rainbow of color. The interior design on both of the units are very calming and neutral, and I wanted it to feel cohesive with the interior and exterior. Exterior. <laughs> with the interior and exterior. So each unit is a slightly different color. One, the upstairs unit is kind of a light blue and then the downstairs unit is a teal. We chose the base color for the mural to be this light blue and then one of the stripes on the design, we incorporated the teal color from the front unit. And we think at the end, it kind of ties the two spaces together since they are right next to each other. I personally think that we can put our design in the wind column for this project. It was simple, but also intentional and it was perfect for our skill level. It also turned turned out to be perfect for the brick walls because the bricks gave nice straight lines and that enabled us to mark and mask off the stripes in the design and they were automatically level. Project costs would also go in the win column. Like I mentioned before, the only project cost for this really was the paint itself and all of the other supplies that we needed, we already had. If you were to take on this project yourself, you should consider what supplies you might need, like paint brushes, drop cloth, trays, tape, etc. And then also what the downtime from the market your rental would face. This didn't really apply to us because we'd already planned to stay here. That was something we accepted that we were gonna have some downtime for our stay. The other is what your time is worth. You know, what are you being pulled away from to do this project? So consider all those things and you know, decide if it's something you want to get into. Our Sherwin-Williams purchase included two gallons of the base coat, which was a paint and primer in one, one quart each of all of the accent colors. We also had to pick up a spare roller handle and our son wanted to throw in a little mini roller set so that he could help us, help us.
We have a business account at Sherwin Williams, and so we get a bit of a discount. But all together, it was two hundred and seventy-five dollars for this paint and and a few supplies that we bought. Next, it was time to get to work. Stephen prepped the area a little bit, but in hindsight, we probably should have hosed down the brick. We did have an issue with peeling, and potentially having a cleaner work service might have helped the paint adhere a little bit stronger. We're not really sure, but we're going to put that in the mistake column just in case. So to start, I used a roller to do two coats of the base color, which was a paint and primer in one, and this area is about 10 by 20 feet. We let those two base coats dry, and then we started on taping and sketching. For the lines at the bottom of the design, we used the bricks as a guide, like I mentioned, and so this process went really quick, maybe five to 10 minutes to take those out. And then to sketch out the sun, we attached a pencil to a string in two different lengths, and we used that little trick to get a clean semicircle, one outlining the sun and one outlining the length of the rays. So we've kind of got a miniature version here, which is pretty simple with a string and a pencil. Uh, Kylie, Kylie held the center. I traced around the semicircle with, with a pen, and that's how we marked everything. Within Canva, I made a duplicate of my original design, and on that duplicate, I added a grid, and that grid represented a one-foot square across the whole design, and we were able to use that to help with scale and placement on the wall. This was a good idea, but in hindsight, I wish that I would have printed out a copy of this and not just had my phone, so I'm going to add that one to the mistake column. With the printed out copy, I could have just taped it on the wall instead of having to get my phone in and out. We ended up adding tape to the rounded portion of the sun as well. Because the brick was an irregular and porous surface, we wanted to do everything we could to avoid bleeding and keep nice clean lines. And speaking of clean lines, that is another thing that we can add to our wind column, the clean lines trick. And this trick can be used on interior projects too. Yeah, so what you do is you lay down your tape and then you come back over that area with the base color. Then any bleeding that is going to happen would be the base color and it kind of soaks into the underlying base color that you have there. So when you come back with your finished color, everything is nice, clean, and crisp when you take off the tape. When we use this clean lines trick, we're usually working with interior drywall. And so we weren't really sure how it was going to work with the brick being such a porous surface. In the end, it, it turned out pretty good. Well, <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> kind of. So when we started to pull back the tape, that's when the project started to go downhill. When we started to pull the tape back, big chunks of the base color started to come with it. <sighs> it was bad. It was really bad. We tried all different methods of taking the tape off. We would pull it really, really slowly or just kind of try and pull at an angle at the corner and some parts would work in some ways, but most of the time, not most, but like a lot of the time we were ending up with just these huge chunks of paint getting pulled off, leaving exposed patches of brick. Yeah, I was getting upset. <laughs> I just took the kids to the beach. And, he had to walk away. He yeah. was so angry. And I, I was like going to cry. It was, it was just frustrating. Phoebe's voice in that uh, interview we did with her where she was saying brick is a pain in the ass. That was just be rolling in my head. What changes for you like with a brick wall or block wall versus like smooth drywall? Like, what should we keep in mind? It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> and we were thinking about, you know, just maybe we can touch it up, but the edges of the patches that were peeling were just like loose. Like, how would you? The paint was stretching with the tape because yeah. the paint was stuck so well to the tape and it was stretching and like li leaving like little curled edges and it was, it was not good. So at this point, we realized that we had made two major mistakes. The first was not letting our base coat dry for long enough. We painted the two base coats pretty early in the morning and then let them dry for a few hours and did the finish, you know, design work in the afternoon, which in hindsight, you know, we should have probably given the base coat at least 24 hours. We're really close to the beach, so there's a lot of moisture in the air. And then mistake number two is that we used a like super strong adhesive painter's tape. We figured we're working with brick. It's a porous and uneven surface. We wanted something that was going to really stick to it. And it did. It really stuck to it. Really stuck to the tape <laughs> or to the paint. Really stuck well. to the paint. We probably should have just used the basic painter's tape, especially since we kind of did the clean lines trick that mitigated the need for super strong tape. But it sounded like a good idea when we got it. So at this point, we have pretty much come to accept that this project is trash and we are just gonna paint over the whole design in the light blue color, enjoy the rest of our vacation, maybe come back another time and do it, or maybe hire a pro. But for the sake of the video and at least the sake of trying, we decided to do some touch-ups and it turned out it worked pretty well. It actually turned out really well. The paint that we added on really flattened out those lifted edges and you couldn't even tell that we had 
totally screwed up the project, mid-project. Let us know in the comments how you think it turned out, but at the end of the day, we're pretty happy with it. Are you happy enough with it to do it again? I don't know, about your projects sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking maybe we could do one, maybe it's too soon. I was thinking maybe we could do one at Saguaro, like on that wall by the, by the putting green. Mm. I don't know, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, we'll see. Well, thanks guys for watching. Let us know if you feel like you could be up for the challenge of doing a DIY mural at one of your properties and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks everyone, bye.